Hey everyone, now in this video I'm going to show you how to create a time-lapse video from a bunch of still images and I'm going to use this hedge behind me as an example. Now I planted this hedge a couple of years ago and I've been taking snapshots of it daily uh, just from the security camera so I could make a time-lapse video out of it. So I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, now I've got a collection of images here taken over a couple of years from that security camera pointing at the hedge. And um, if you just look at the size of these, with media info, you'll see they're all high definition. So 1920 by 1080. Okay, let's have a look at one here and see what we're talking about. All right, so that's when I had the palm trees there that I dug out. And just a few images here before I moved the camera. And pretty soon, that was me working there, and then they're gone. And then I planted the hedge, and so starts the uh, collection of images. So if I just go through them one by one, of course, over time, you see the hedge growing. So I want to make that into a video. Okay, so I'm going to use FFmpeg to do this. And I'll just go through the options here. So I'm going to use a frame rate of 25, uh, format, image 2. And with that, you can use uh, this uh, pattern type, glob. That lets you use the um, Linux-like output here. So when I choose the input files, I can select from this directory, all of them .jpg. And the video codec, I'll just use um, libx264. Uh, constant uh, CRF, sorry, that's the, um, the quality when using x264. of 20, that'll do. Pix format, that's your color space and all that. VJ 422p and give it an output name, I'll just call it test.mp4. So it's now creating a video from all those images. That's done. So now if I just list it, you'll see I've got this video file here now, test.mp4. So if I play that, I now have a 25 uh, frame rate time lapse. And you can see my hedge has grown, so I might as well just let that play so you can see how awesome that hedge is. I trimmed it a couple of times along the way, but there it is. So that's the concept of how to make a time-lapse video from images. So I'll just piss that off. Now in Australia, we've got our Bureau of Meteorology website, which is pretty good. Um, a lot of people use it to see what the weather's doing. And one thing they've got is these satellite images of the clouds and that. So, well, images of everything really. And it can animate them over a few frames. So not very, not very many, but you can see here it does this little animation. Well, I did some poking around and I found the actual image sources. So I collected some a couple of years ago now. And so here's some from that, that site. So if I just um, have a look at one of them. Okay, that's, uh, that's one there, but you can see that's a lot bigger. It has all this extra space that I don't need. I don't really care what's going on in the Pacific out there. I just want to see Australia. Now I've cropped this down already to um, 4K resolution, but I want to take that down even more to just high def, 1920 by 1080, and just mainly around Australia. So to do that, we'll just confirm the um, the file here. You can see it's uh, 3840 by 2160. So what I'm going to use is a program called Convert. Now you need Image Magic installed, and that'll install the Convert program. So what I'm going to do here is, um, I'll just convert that last image that I did. I'm going to convert that image and I'm going to crop it. Now I'm going to crop it to be uh, 2304 by 1296. And the offsets of the position that I'm going to start it from the top left in the X and Y is 560 and 540. And that'll give me an image, I'll just do that now, and call it uh, test1.jpg. That'll do. Now if I show you that now, test1.jpg, that's pretty much the region I want to see, but it's still, it's an obscure resolution here, and I just want to make that a good resolution. So, instead of just that, I'm also going to uh, resize it to 1920 by 1080, and then call it test2.jpg. Now, that image is 1920 by 1080, so in one go, I've just converted the bigger image, I've cropped it and resized it to where I want it to be. But I've got a lot of images here, so I'm going to have to set up a script. All right, so I'll just remove those test images I just put. So I'm back to just my images. I'll make a script here. 
And in all honesty, I'm gonna copy the script that I already made. So here it is. I'll just talk what's going on here. Lists, as you know, just lists the files, start.jpg outputs to a file list. So in essence, when you list uh, start.jpg, which is everything, it lists them normally to the output, but I'm gonna redirect that to a file list. So now they're contained in that file list. I'll just remove that file list and uh, start from scratch again. So that's what the first line does. Now this is just a loop from while to done. So while it's reading the lines of that file list, which in essence is the file name, it calls the file name, whatever that is in that line of the file, which will be its file name. And I'm just gonna edit a little bit of the, um, oh, I should explain this, I suppose. I need just the file name itself. So this has all this IDE something dot something dot. So if I do um, just a normal file here, you'll see the full file name. Now if I cut with a delimiter of dot, which means exactly what it sounds like, the dot is now the delimiter. So you've got three fields here, the first, second, third one. I just want um, fields one to two. you'll see without the JPEG. Basically all I'm doing is cutting the .jpg at the end um, because I want to add a prefix to that afterwards. So that's what that line does there. It just cuts the um, JPEG off the current file name. That's why I called it file prefix. Um, echo, that's just a little message to say it's currently doing that file. Convert is what I just did a minute ago where I'm converting now the current file .jpg. So I'm manually putting JPEG back on there. Um, doing the same editing that I did before, but the output is now called cropped underscore current file name prefix dot JPEG. That's just the way I did it there. So that'll go through all of those once I uh, make it executable. So now if I run that, off it goes. So it saves having to do it manually. And also doing this manually with a mouse on a GUI would take forever. And the, yeah, you'd probably lose accuracy because you'd never do the two the same way. That's why it's better to just work out what you need to do, then run it as a script. Okay, that's just finished. So now I've got a whole bunch of files with cropped at the start of them. So I'm just going to move them into their own directory. Make the temp, move cropped start temp. Oh, I should have done it on the machine they were on. Okay, I'm doing this over the network, but I'll get there. Okay, so they're all in the... Uh, temp directory now. Okay, so now I want to make the video. So I'll just do what I did before. FFmpeg, whoop, rate 25, format image 2, pattern type, glob. Input is the files in this directory with star.jpg and video codec libx264 264 0 20 pix format j422p um, and I'll call it timelapse.mp4 again I'm doing this over the network it'll be quicker on the server itself but it'll get there okay so that's done so now I have a timelapse video there I'll, and I'll just have a look at the info on that before I run it and you can see that we have 25 frames a second 1920 by 1080p so uh, I'll just see how it looks. There it is. And the reason I chose this particular month is because down the bottom here, this is all smoke from the big bushfires we had um, a couple of years ago when it does the daytime scan. You can see all that smoke going way over the ocean there. So it's pretty intense. Anyway, that's just a 25 uh, frames per second video of it. I made another one from a very still night, just the car in the driveway. I don't know if, you, if you're watching this on a phone, screen might be too small to see, but I've got all the stars in the background here over time. So if you're using a, a normal camera as opposed to a, um, a security cam, you can get very high resolution and then just make 4K or above uh, videos from it. All right, so they're the commands you run to make a video. It's pretty simple. And uh, I've also got this thing here, this little um, rotary thing. So you wind that up, put a camera on top of it, and it slowly rotates so you can take photos and then 
put a video together of that but I don't really use this I don't really want this I might give this away or at least offer it as a discount you never know uh, to anyone who wants that but anyway things like that you can do just scripting stuff on Linux is in my opinion the easiest way to do it so that'll do for now until next time take it easy